Hey guys, I'm uh, I am uh, kind of at a remote location for a couple hours, so um, I am um, just trying to catch up on some mixes and, and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, of course, being the procrastinator that I am, um, YouTube popped this video up of uh, John McLucas. Um, called why I never recommend budget audio interfaces for serious home studios. And you know, that's the exact kind of thing that just screams out to me. So this is, this is obviously, this can be one of these things that I absolutely have to respond to. And, and I didn't really have a setup for responding and reacting and whatever. So I'm trying to have this work and I'm sorry that here, uh, this reverb is really bad and I'm sure it sounds horrible, but, um, Hopefully, since I got the headset mic in, um, we're just going to listen, and uh, it should be okay. So let's uh, let me carry on. Now, generally, I like John McLucas. He is a beardo, but um, he does a lot about writing songs. And since I don't know anything about writing songs or any of that stuff, I think it's a cool thing. I, I you know he could be totally full of crap, but <laughs> seems friendly enough. Uh, I was trying to get enough money to bring him down to the school. So he could uh, come down to Hawaii and hang out and, uh, you know, the kids could learn some songwriting stuff from him. And then, uh, yeah, it, man, that, that, that summer got ugly fast, huh? Uh, hello, whoever's out there. But um, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna start this up and let's see. But, yeah, he is a beardo, so there's that. So we got to keep an eye out. If you have a Scarlett 2i2 or an interface similar to it, I need you to pay attention to this video. Especially if you take your craft seriously and want to record yourself really well at home in any... Hey, let me um, let me know if the audio is okay. I, I think the levels are about the same, but I don't know. Sorry. ...capacity. Okay, now this isn't purely about the Scarlett. That's just the most common one. Anything that's like an under four to $600 interface that's two channels is going to have this problem that also goes for the very budget eight channel interfaces again the entry level interfaces if you have okay so let's let's try and guess actually i'm i can't guess i you know what what could these budget ones have that the other ones don't have when he, he keeps saying two channel so let's um i mean of course you know me i'm going to talk about loopback so that's going to be huge um not sure what else there is here. Maybe it's a combo jack and it's noisier or something, but yeah, let's just let's just keep an eye. Have one of those. You are struggling with your recordings. You might be victim to this hidden cost, and I need to tell you about it more in depth because people don't understand how impactful it is, how much it can be doing to your music, to your end results, and to the songs that you are trying to put out. Let's unpack that. Really. Okay, so this is a claim that the um, these cheaper mic preamps or whatever. Maybe it's not because it's cheap. <clears throat> who knows what it is um they're gonna do something that's gonna make it hard for you to write this is actually gonna have an impact and these are the things i worry about i don't care about stuff that's not gonna matter but stuff that if you're claiming this is gonna have a big impact this is important so let's see what what we got here exactly a cheerful start to the day am i right hi i'm john mclucas a traveling pop producer traveling the country all of 2022 making incredible music all along the way so i wanted to talk about the most common interface that i've seen with any artists that i work with and the many issues that have come up with them because here's the thing you probably got into it thinking oh this is the cheap option this is what people recommend okay i'm a minute and four seconds into it uh we have no idea what the problem is but I think this is just how you make YouTube, right? So maybe I shouldn't complain. So I'm going to go ahead and get that and stick to it. But you've probably run into a few issues doing so. And I'll say for me, I used to also be a fan of these interfaces. I'm actually recording on one right now for this video, although it's not my main interface anymore. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You go in to record. You are We're a minute and 30 seconds in almost. And then we're about to get to the problem, I think. Let's try this again. Gonna have trouble. Sounds familiar. You go in to record, you are gonna have troubles with a few different things. One being potentially you have turned your mic pre down all the way and you are still clipping. Two, you are trying to record and having the worst time because you have either tried the first method, which is to use your DAW and try to use their plugins to record and getting latency, no matter how low you put the buffer size. 
Or two, you turn on the direct monitor function on one of those entry level interfaces and you find out, holy crap, this sucks. If uh, I'm kind of afraid what's about to happen here. Either you don't under yeah, let, let's just, we're just gonna let them go. Um, the clipping thing that doesn't mean it's cheap. There are plenty of way too expensive things that'll clip. Um, you know, earlier focus rights, for instance. I mean, I know we're talking about scarlets and stuff, but when we're talking about the rack mounted units, uh, not even the interfaces, even some of the mic preamps, they would clip on, on stronger guitars. Um, you know, anything that's not getting full 28 volts on a mic preamp, you're, you're kind of asking for it, right? Um, but this isn't a function of cheap. This, this, that has nothing to do with how cheap something is. You could put a pad or not put a pad. Uh, well, wasn't it last week I was asking everybody about these PreSonus things that were clipping? It, they're brand new, and they're not among the cheapest ones. I, I know their budget and whatever, but I've I seen the expensive ones do really crappy stuff. Look at uh, – I don't know if I should say the name, but look at the most expensive and most well-known converter line out there. And when they made audio interfaces, I'm not even going to say it, but that's as far as I need to go, and that should be as far as I possibly have to go. We know we know about this company and what they say, uh, what they may do as a reaction if I actually name them. But so the money sure as hell doesn't mean anything to clipping. Let's go on. If you've had any of that happen, it is the interface's fault by default. Now, there's a reason they're so cheap right? These are made to be the minimum viable product to get you moving. But if you're watching this video, you're probably a serious creator. You're probably a serious artist and probably a serious vocalist, if not all, maybe two of those things. Now, you're, I know you're not going to talk about latency as a function of these cheap converters or cheap, cheap interfaces. Everything, no matter how goddamn expensive, uses the same drivers. The Sycon, Thessicon, whatever. Almost everything's using those, and, and I don't care if you're paying all the money in the world or none of the money. Um, unless you're RME, you're using these things. As far as I know, there, there may be another USB driver out there. Um, for some reason, the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver seems to work a little bit better. It still could be Thessicon. Um, you know, here's somebody who's actually built a chart, actually with all your guys' help out there, who's built a chart that actually measures the round trip interface or round trip latency of, of popular interface families. They're the same. Uh, you know, some guys get a little bit better implementation, but if you're running Desicon drivers, you're running Desicon drivers. They're, they may have different features and they may allow you to lock or unlock hidden safety buffers. And hey, if you're running a Mac, <laughs> You can't even get to half of this stuff, so I, I wouldn't be complaining. You're running a Mac, you're getting what you get. Um, I'm going to be running a MacBook Pro in a little bit, and I'll see if I can't do something to get this latency down. But this is not this is not a, a budget issue. What what do you have that's not RME that's running better USB drivers? And if you're going to say it has to be something else, I'm running an RME Digiface USB for 32 channels, and I'm fine. You you may like. A lot of people are very sensitive to latency. At 128 buffers on the on the uh, Digiface USB, we're pretty okay. Um, I play guitar and I'm doing fine. It may be worse for a vocalist. I, I could imagine vocals would really suck, but I don't know how you're going to fix that because uh, you're you're not really going to get that much lower of latency. So I just said, so you want your stuff to be performed well, captured well have a seamless experience. Now, when we talk about direct monitoring, if you aren't familiar with the term, the word direct monitoring means the ability to hear your vocals directly in your headphones with zero latency because it bypasses a computer and sends the audio right back to you. The reason that the cheaper interfaces have an issue with this is they are just taking your raw mic signal, no compression, no EQ, no effects, and sending it back to you, which is... Which is exactly what a direct monitor is supposed to do. It'd be nice if you had effects on there, but the, the price you have to pay for some of these effects, some, either you're going to get locked into, can I say, I'll just use crappy. You might get locked into really crappy drivers. Um, it's a certain company that a lot of you knuckleheads push, 
that I can't stand. I don't trust in any way, shape, or form. They may be a lot better now, but, well, at the beginning, they really told us customers what we could go do with ourselves. And I am, I've watched them fumble everything they've done. In fact, let's just say, if he's going to say universal audio because it has plugins built in, whatever, man. Uh, in my experience... You don't save any DSP by going to those USB dongles, the, the, the universal audio dongles. And it's a dongle. It's a dongle. You know the software runs. The one plugin that we know for sure that runs on both platforms can run a bajillion in, inter, in <laughs> instances natively. And it doesn't even run that much on the stupid dongle chip. The dongle chip does you no good. In my experience, it, it costs you more CPU and more trouble to run that stupid dongle than it than if you just ran stuff natively. And the stuff wasn't even that good. I, I was kind of sad, actually. Um, I'm sure the LA2, I mean, it was fine, but, I mean, we got plugins that do the same thing without any trouble. Now, if you're talking RME, uh, there are certain RME devices that have uh, effects built in, but are you going to have those on your... Um, on your mix down, you're going to print those to tape or something? <laughs> something like a reverb? You don't care about the latency anyway. So if you put the direct monitor on, on your um, on your focus right or whatever, assuming you can mix between playback and DAW, uh, just turn the monitoring on. If you really need zero latency monitoring, it's not zero latency, by the way. These There's converter latency on the way in. So let's say you're going for your mic. It's going to your to your interface when you get to that interface it's it's converting to um to digital there's a converter hit right there it could be two milliseconds it, it could be it could be rather long actually um but there is a converter latency so you're going to get a little bit of delay no matter what but if you're running a reverb in parallel you're not going to care plus that reverb's already on your mix so when you go to mix down you got the same reverb that you used in tracking the only way you're going to pull that off with the RME thing is if you, you know, you, you, you could do a, like a reinsert or something like that, I guess. But if you really got to use the direct monitoring, just run it in parallel. Uh, I have, uh, I think I have it with me. I've, I've got a Focusrite 4i4. I know this is one of the more expensive ones, but not by much. I mean, they're still El Cheapo. Um, actually, where did it go? Uh, Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's this 4i4 here. Um, I remember some of them had like a had like a switch for for direct monitor, or some of them had a knob. I think this one is actually controlled in the software. And uh, I mean, if that's the case, run them in parallel. You're, you're not get, you're not getting that latency. So that, that would be a better solution to me. As much as I love RME, you guys know I love RME. Um, if you're talking about Motu, to go to a Motu to get that, they're good. I like that Motu's M4 and M2 or whatever have a loopback. I'm not sure how well it works, but I don't necessarily want to deal with their software in order to do this. So let's let's hear this. It's essentially, if I may say, useless. It is actually a useless function to me to even have that on an interface. It is beyond unusable. Because if I am any kind of dynamic as a singer, I'm either going to be way too quiet or way too loud, burning my ears off so I can't hear myself. Have you experienced that? Y you have. Okay, so so this is, a, this is a good one here. He needs compression in order to sing well. Or he would like compression in order to sing well. And so would many people. This is a problem. So now... Now you're dealing with latency uh, because this is something that's going to be in the insert path, not like your reverb, because your reverb is going to be fine with latency, delays, all that kind of stuff. If it's an effect that you would normally run in parallel, forget the latency. You don't, you, I mean, not that you don't care, but you don't care that much on this thing. Um, compression is a different story. Um, that's a problem, and and he's right about this. So let's let's see where we go from here. I I don't think his solution is actually if he actually went and tested it is going to be all that much 
better. <laughs> if you have one of these interfaces, you've gone through that. So then you go to your computer, you you know understand maybe a little bit about buffers. You turn it down to 32 samples. You try to turn off as many plugins as you can. You're still having latency issues. That's only if you could possibly get there and your computer isn't overheating as you're trying to run plugins. Okay. The number of plugins you have is not going to cause a latency issue. Um, okay, we got to really... This is, this is a hard one, actually. This, this is one people get wrong all the time. And it's not necessarily wrong, wrong. Um, there's two different issues here. There's an there's a absolute round-trip latency, and that's, that's really set by the drivers. That's, that's all there is to it. So you got converter latency. You have your input buffer. You have whatever processing time it takes to do the um, whatever processing you're doing. And then you have uh, a hidden safety buffer almost always, which you probably run a Mac knowing you got a beard like that and you beardos tend to run Macs. You can't necessarily turn off the hidden safety buffer on most of these drivers on Mac the way you would on PC. Um, so, you know, again, the superiority of Windows comes through, but uh, I, I know how many viewers that love to hear that. Um, so... There's that hidden safety buffer, then there's the output buffer, then there's the output uh, analog to, or digital to analog converter latency. So those are all your latencies put together. Notice that in nowhere in there was the number of plugins. Um, the only thing is that, that middle spot is whatever processing you're doing. If you're doing a latent process, then yeah, there's a problem. Some some product some processes have to be latent. We make all zero latency plugins, but if you turn on the look ahead, um, our plugins are no longer zero latency. Uh, there's types of EQs that that work better with latency. Um, there's types that get phasey, uh, you know, with latency. Um, but anyway, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna knock down your latency by using less plugins. You're not gonna knock down your latency by getting a faster computer. What you're gonna do is knock down the, the, the lowest usable latency because you can get to this latency, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be clicking and popping and dropping out all over the place. That's the issue with plugins and CPU and, and all that stuff. But um, sadly, the, the better written drivers also use less CPU at any given latency. And that's, that's something that's been a brutal slap in the face, um, no matter who or what you are. And again, that's one of the reasons we love RME so much. But that doesn't mean that I can't pull off everything with one of these Focusrite Scarlets or whatever. Um, I would have trouble with the new PreSonus if it's going to clip on a, on a regular guitar input. That's kind of a bummer. But um, yeah, I, I can imagine a vocalist is going to be way more sensitive to this kind of thing. Than, uh, than I am as a guitar player. Um, I frequently play with wirelesses, and I stand pretty far away from the stage if I can help it. I don't want to be anywhere near my drummer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I don't want to be near the drummer, so I will walk as far as I possibly can in that club away from the drums if I have a wireless. So I, I'm i not all that sensitive to latency, and you might be surprised. I'm not going to say I'm Yngwie Malmsteen, but I can play pretty goddamn fast. And... Um, it doesn't bother me, but one day I did actually uh, do like a um, like a millisecond to beat. Uh, let, let's see. So I'm gonna just like uh, milliseconds to BPM, BPM. Um, yeah, so like tempo BPM. So I'm gonna pull up this little chart here. It says enter BPM 120. And it's gonna tell me what what each note is worth, a quarter note and whatever. So. Um, 128th note is 16 milliseconds, okay? So let's say we had, uh, let's go to round, round trip latency roundup. So you just type this in Google, round trip latency roundup, you'll actually get to our music schools page where I host this. And it has, um, it has uh, round trip latencies of popular families. This really needs to be updated. And look, it only goes down to 64. Nowadays people are going down like 16 or something. So I need to update this, but let's say it's 64. Let's say at 128, because that's where I'm usually running it. Um, the round trip latency on these uh, Scarlets. Yeah, I don't think this is right anymore. This, this is the second generation. i got to put the third generation in. Um, 
I'm assuming that the best Decicon drivers is what this is going to be like. Uh, let's see, find a USB. Personas. I'm going to assume this is somewhere around 10 or 11 milliseconds. And that's, that's what I play. Uh, I usually play those things like 128. So it's it's a 128th note. Maybe maybe a little bit slower, maybe a little bit faster. But that's that's a little scary. Right? Um Okay, sorry, let me. Okay. So let me, let me just go back uh play this. So that that gives you an idea of what that latency is. So um a 256th note, that would be about the latency of um what you're talking about now when you're talking it sounds eerie to hear any delay on your voice at all so even in this room i'm not i'm not electronically playing back i don't hear any electronic stuff coming back just the bouncing in this room is driving me nuts actually i want to do something about that if i could okay so here we go let's go on it's on your vocal chain to get them back to you fast enough and then you have to decide, do I want to freeze down everything? And then even then, it may not because like plugins like Soothe 2 by Oak Sound, it, it's just this whole... Again, if you're running a thousand plugins and stuff, that's on you. That's Again, I, I know you want to be able to run a lower latency and, and run more plugins, but um, this, this is not exactly the same issue. Situation where no matter what, you're compromising. And this is what happens when you compromise. When you have to compromise on your recording setup, that means you're compromising on how well you hear yourself. When you compromise on how well you hear yourself, you compromise on the ability to assess did I give a good take. And when you can't tell if you've given a good take, you're going to be in your head. What happens when you're in your head? Do you think you're giving the best emotional transcendent journey of spirit in that performance? No. So now your performances are starting to suffer. Oh. So we're in our head. Our performances are suffering. Which means we're spending more time recording, which means we might have to re-record things more, which means we're going to get less stuff done every single year. And that means less songs out, connecting with us people, less growth of your community of what you want to do and what your goals are with music making, all starting from this direct monitoring issue. Okay, so forget that this is about direct monitoring, whatever this is about. This is the ergonomics thing I'm always talking about. You make stuff easier on yourself, you're going to get better stuff done. I mean, you just... You know, I have it set in that big room. In fact, I, I got to make a new template because now we got all the new stuff. My big room has the drums all mic'd up. You get in there, you turn it on, you're on. You're ready to record. In less than five minutes, I could get a whole band in there. Unless they're numb nuts is and making trouble. I can get a whole band recorded in five minutes or, or ready to record in five minutes. That's big time. And and he's right. If you, if you make things hard on yourself, you're going to have a hard time recording. You're not going to turn out as good of a product, I don't think. Issue. And this has been the case with so many artists that I've personally worked with. Unfortunately, I don't think that necessarily that the solutions to this is going to be very well. I mean, go buy a baby face or whatever. You're going to have that issue that you're not going to have the effects that you recorded with, I think. I mean, you, I guess you could print them to tape if you're really crazy, but I wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, it is hard as, as a vocalist. You may It may be too trippy to hear your vocals at any latency. With and help them get to a better solution because this is the thing when you put a song out you can't go back you can't no. it is too important unless it, you're the cockney rejects or something you put out 400 versions of the same song is quite literally a chapter of your story a chapter of your life and once you put that out people need to connect with it on a deep level because if they don't connect with it they don't believe your performance if you could have done it better, they're going to go and move on to something else. They're yeah, not I keep saying this about rappers, man. Like, it, when you're for rappers, man, if it doesn't sound like you believe it, why should anybody else? They're just going to move on to the next guy, especially you guys that fill your stuff up with, hey, hey, what? Hey, the hell is that? Like, you put in a minimal effort? Of course they're going to go to somebody else. Hey, <laughs> there's no point. I mean, you're almost telling people to, to move on. I'm not going to listen to it again. I mention all of this because this is the true cost. If you think about the actual problems of not having a good direct monitoring system, those are it. And I don't want that for you because think about it. How much extra time, how much extra anxiety, how much extra frustration? I'm almost terrified to, to think about the solution this guy's going to offer up. Let's see. All came from your inability to hear and monitor yourself correctly.
That's a lot. That's terrible. So let's not do that, okay? Can we agree right okay, now? Let's, let's not, not do, do that. that. Uh, shake your head no, but then also, yes, we're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. Yes, we agree with John. Okay, so what can and should we do? Well, there is a better answer. I am not at all sponsored about this. This is me bringing my advice, my perspective, my... Please don't say UA. Please don't say UA. Please don't say UA. And if you say antelope, holy crap. Let's just wait on the ground, in the field perspective, that every serious music maker should invest in a universal audio Apollo interface. Oh, he said universal audio. What did I say? What did I say? Can I get a, I'm just gonna take a bow right here. Yeah, bow into the internet. So, they call it from the beginning. I wouldn't use this piece of crap if you paid me. Sorry, uh, I know I should take that back. I, we're, have to be friendly with all the interface makers. I got, not I, we as a community, actually several communities, got burned so bad by UA. Even when there was an offer to fix their stuff by probably the best coder in the world when it comes to this audio stuff, for free, for their customers, and they turned us down. That thing is a dongle. All right. Universal Audio may be making cool stuff now. I know they have a DAW now, which is actually really cool. I haven't really tried their DAW, but um, that's kind of cool that they have one. Um, I heard some rumors that there is a new DAW out pushed by a big company that's really just uh, bringing one of the early DAWs back to life. And I, I think it might've been Traction or something like that. I actually liked Traction. I, I'm bummed that it didn't get as far as it, bummed it didn't get as much Traction as it got. But I called that this guy was gonna say in Universal Audio, I would stay away from that stuff. I'm sorry, I, I don't wanna burn somebody who's a potential ally, but I, I just, I, what are you gonna do with this? Are you gonna, I mean, it's such such a, Tell you what, Universal Audio, send me a new one. I'll try it out. I'm not going to buy this piece of... I'm not going to buy one of these things. At least we can test if the if the latency is good and stuff. I don't believe for a second that that DSP accelerator is worth a crap. It, it sure could be. But, you know, we've been burned so bad on that. And, uh, you know, the computers are so fast. It, it's true. You could do this. I don't. I don't think it's zero latency though. Again, John, did you measure this? Is this zero latency? What What is the actual round trip latency of a? Uh, let's see. Round trip latency. Universal audio plugin. Let's see if it, what happens when you put it. Why am I getting latency in my DAW sessions? Why is there latency when I try to record through UAD plugins? UAD plugins for latency. Um, they're saying there will be no noticeable latency. Um, Apollo Twin have latency. With Apollo, latency is basically indiscernible. How would that be? Um, so, so it's, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty short. Okay, here we go. What kind of round trip latency can I expect when using UAD software? Um, if you're worried about latency while tracking, get an Apollo and use console for its no latency. It's not true. It's not no latency. Um, uh, enabling live track. UAD latency is normally twice your buffer. Um, Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting any actual measurements here. Uh, I'm sure that that Vin Kirgliano or somebody would be able to tell us. Um, three lowest latency latency issues with Thunderbolt. Uh, UAD plugins delay compensation. UAD plugin latency chart. Here we go. Post. So somebody made a spreadsheet. Let's see if this thing's any good. Um, so the ones that are going to matter, right, it's like he's probably going to use the LA-2A and the 1176. So let's let's go straight there. Um, 
Or is it LA three A? Where's the where's the LA two A? Okay, hold on. L A two nope. Let's try two A. Two A. There we go. LA two A. Wait, what the hell? This thing uses a I wonder which UAD they're talking about. Because sixteen percent, that's insane. It's gonna use you can run like five of these things on your on your piece of I know I shouldn't say it, I'm gonna shut up. Okay, teletronics, teletronics, teletronics. Oh, see one of them uses three three percent, one uses sixteen percent. That's interesting. So that, that legacy must have been the early one like I used to have. Um Okay. Octo latency. Why are they saying one of them says zero and one of them says fifty six samples? Yeah, okay, so the legacy one is zero. And you, you probably get away with it. If, if that's the same one we used to use, it was it was fine, actually. Um, I'm, I'm not liking this, though. This is 56 samples of latency. Um, let's, let's look at 1176. 1176. So there's a legacy one. Yeah, see, the new ones use a pile of CPU. And they don't have... They have 55 milliseconds of latency. So unless you're using this this legacy one... You're still, man, that's a lot of latency, 55 milliseconds? Or, or is that 55 samples? Not, sorry, not milliseconds. There's no way this can be milliseconds. <clears throat> Let me see what it's in. It should just be samples. Um, I'm, I'm betting that that's, this is um, in samples, not, not, in, uh, not in milliseconds. Yeah, samples, samples. Uh, looks like there's a chart here. Let's see. Okay, blue is 55 samples. So, so like 55, 56 samples. It's not, it's not zero, man. I mean, that might be enough. One sample. So, so think about what frequency you're at, and and how many samples it would take before you could invert the phase through through latency. It's not much. That 55 covers it. I guarantee it. Um, let, let's just see. Let's see. 55, 55 samples, 2 milliseconds. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'll do this later. But any, anyways, um, so we're not at zero latency. We're at like 50 something samples latency, unless you use the zero latency ones, which which you may, but I think uh, everybody doesn't want to use those anymore. They all say legacy and they're like zero samples and use very little CPU, which is ideal for tracking. But you know, I, I like to track how I'm gonna mix. But again, I, I know this is a, an issue for vocalists, so I'm, I'm trying not to be too rigid here, but let's see. But I wouldn't have recommended that thing, but I called it, I knew he, I knew he would. Or above. Now, the reason is those interfaces offer an incredibly robust monitoring system. No. It does a lot more than what I'm going to tell you about. But one of the main things that it does is it allows you to put on processing on your vocals just for monitoring into your headphones. So within the interface, there's a small processor that allows you to EQ, compress, add effects, add limiting, add whatever you want, all in the interface, so it doesn't go to your computer, it stays right in the interface, it processes it there, and then sends it right back to your headphones with zero latency. Not zero latency. Not zero latency. Those aren't zero latency, so again, we got the converter latency plus you got the latency of whatever this um, this DSP is doing. And, and like we show here, um, it's not going to be zero unless you're using one of these green. Actually, shit, what is some of these? 
Some of these green plugins actually have. Okay, yeah, zero latency. Okay. Um, so if you use these green ones, there's actually a lot of them. <laughs> but but again, you're not. You aren't monitoring what you're mixing. You're you're going to still change stuff out. Now, what is this gobbly gook these guys keep pushing? YouTube, you keep nailing us for stuff. Why don't you take care of these guys that keep spamming stuff? All right, so let me go back here. So imagine this. You get to sit down and sing with a full vocal chain on, with no latency. With not no latency. Not no latency. Keep saying it, but you're wrong. In fact, except for these legacy zero latency plugins, you're going to get more latency off of this thing <clears throat> than you would at 32 samples with the with the zero latency plugin. Can you run 32 samples? I don't know. Um, I don't, but I have a feeling that on, on a modern computer with all this modern stuff, you sure as hell could. Uh, so you're actually going to be higher latency than that. The, all the effects you want with the EQ, the compression, the shape, the attack, the density, the grit, the cleanness, the intimacy, the grandness of exactly what you want every time you record. That's a pretty compelling reason, right? If you could do that for every time you sat down to record for the next two years, how much would that save your sanity? <laughs> and I could do that right now with the Focusrite Scarlet. I might plug this thing in and, and, and test that myself in two seconds here. Let's find out. The next two years, next five years, next 10 years, it is exponential. And as much as it can be scary to look at a $1,000 price tag, if you think back to the last two years of you trying to record on your own and then taking that two years and duplicating it through this and next year, or you can spend $1,000 and have all that go away, would it be worth it? If you do that for five years, would it be worth it? Would it be worth it for two years if you could get financing for it, which every music place offers financing very simply. You get 0% to your financing on that very quickly, and it's like a $50. Yeah, but then you're running one of these things. This is, I mean, I know he, he's saying he's not sponsored by these guys, and I believe him. I, I don't I don't think that he's going to lie about that, but um, I would not recommend this company. I'm sorry dollar a month payment or something ridiculously cheap actually no it's like 20 30 i don't know i'm not math i am not math but i have lived too long dealing with that crap and had so many people deal with that for too long and i cannot let you fall fate to the same thing so if you have been experiencing that my recommendation is understand how much of an investment it is for your future and how much it's going to pay back in the future for every recording you do from here forward in perpetuity or as long as we live this is not the only interface that does this this is just the main one i'm sure there are others out there i'm of the type of personality that when i see something that works i just go get it and i don't want to spend all my time thinking about it i want to go do the thing that i'm here to do not not being a professional shopper so if you know of other alternatives or other ways to get around this problem please let me know in the comments down below no i do not think this is a scarlet issue but yes this is a budget interface issue i want you to go out there and i want you to have a great time recording and i don't want that to be another obstacle with the hundreds that we have to face every single day let's take care of one that we feasibly can and we can finance responsibly and enjoy the recording process once again so thank you okay what are you saying <clears throat> would work it may it may actually help for a lot of you guys um but you know looking at their drivers i doubt this is much faster than the newest focus rates okay so we're going to do something stupid i'm going to plug this thing in and it's probably going to mess this system all up but what we're really going to do is um i'm going to plug an output to an input and we're going to we're going to test something right here. I'm going to turn off all the stuffs and thingamajiggers. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can think of some, some good way to do this, okay? So here's output. I'm going to take the line output um, one. Let's just hope that's whatever. We'll, we'll figure out this routing. And I'm going to plug this into the uh, input, okay? That should be enough. Now, this this can be the ugly part because Windows is going to try and swap all these <laughs> inner cards around and inputs and outputs. But let's just see what we get here. 
and I'm going to show you a couple things if, if I can get this to work. Check, 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 check. Okay, still, I'm still talking. Uh, focus right, control. Let's see if that's still going. Check, 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 check. Um, Discord is going. Uh, where's my focus right control software? I don't see it. Um, this guy plugged in. It is plugged in. Let's um, I'm just gonna put that off to the side for a second. Actually, put it off to this side for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do a couple little trickety things here. But let's first open up Reaper. Um, I'm gonna change the audio to ASIO. Focus right USB ASIO, output one and two, input one and two. Um, let's see, how can we do this? ASIO configuration. Come on, focus right, pop up. Okay, here we go. Buffer size 192. I'm gonna go down to 64. Okay, where's the where's the focus right control software? I'm gonna need it. There we go. I'm I'm not super th thrilled with this uh, focus right control software, by the way. Um, mixing routing. Here we go. Okay, so I want line outputs one and two. Go back one and two. Line outputs three and four. Where's where's line outputs uh, one and two? Software playback is going to. Line outputs. And force, force. Back to all, it's going on one and two. Or hardware input one and two output. So that's that's one and two. I guess that's the speaker outs. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I think this is right. Um, I'm going to turn off um, latency compensation. Oh, wow, that's that's not cool. Uh, okay, so audio devices. Audio device buffering. Okay, allow uh, disable anticipative effects. Okay, what I want to do is turn off the. Um, all right, right there. Use driver ported latency. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do this manually. Um, I swear there's a way to turn off the. Uh, the uh, latency compensation. Device. Where is it? All tracks. So I'm just looking for latency right now. Use driver reported latency. No. That might be all you really need to do now. All tracks. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I think I think that's it. Let's just test it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a um, uh, let's just do this project as uh, latency test. Okay, so this is this is what we do. I, I don't just talk about stuff. We're gonna show it here. And you goddamn spammers, get off my stuff, man. Insert um, click source. I'm just gonna take one of these little blips, and I'm gonna um, uh, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna use this to oops to tell. Um, so I'm just gonna glue this. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna play this out one and two. Okay, and I'm gonna record it on one. Okay, um, click source, and this is gonna be recording. So we're gonna we're gonna see the uh, the latency here with 64 buffers, and this is just gonna be output to input, right? It's not gonna be the other way around. That's okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit record here, um, and let's see what happens. There we go. Did it record? I don't think so. Okay, what did I do wrong? Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna loop this for a second until I figure this out. Okay, why is this not getting in? uh, input one? So this one's going to go out output one. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm going to do this pre-fader post effects. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just take one more time that compensation is off. I don't. I don't actually trust this. Comp. I'm just going to put comp. See if that finds something. Anticipative effects processing. No, so no compensate. I think this is it. Okay, so we're going to try this again. So I'm going to hit record. Okay. So I'm going to change this to um, minutes and seconds, which it already is. So let's let's measure this. So let's let's just let's just read this. So 64 samples plus whatever hidden safety buffer we get, we should get, we should be getting at least 64 samples, right? We got we got it coming out. Um, we got it coming out and we got it coming in. I'm not a billion percent sure about one of these, but so I'm going to put a marker here and put a marker here and we're going to measure roughly between the markers. What do we got? Where's, uh, where did you move this to? Okay. Length of time. 0.3 milliseconds. And that's about what we got or three milliseconds, sorry. And that's about what we got as our output buffer, right? <clears throat> so let's just put this in samples. Just right, 84,402 samples for three milliseconds. I don't think so. I think something wrong is going to happen here. Samples. Seconds. 1.913 seconds. There's no way that's one point. It's not a second between those. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. Nope. Okay. Something, something is wrong with my uh, recording. Okay. 140 samples. So, so roughly the input sample and the output sample, which comes out to 128 plus another, but 16, 14 or so, is is that available? Let's take a look. As your configuration, yeah. See this this particular driver doesn't have. This is like some of the some of the Behringer drivers don't have this either. This is looking more like what you get on a Mac, where you, you can't really change what you're doing. Like yeah, it's fucking Macs. I, I got a MacBook Pro coming, and I'm really <laughs> kind of freaked out. Um, Okay, so so that's what we got, 140 samples, okay? Um, what you would be doing, well, let's, let's just see. Let's see how much, um, we're going to be running the same, I, I guarantee those UA drivers are not going to be any better than these uh, regarding the round trip latency. I wouldn't be surprised if they're far worse. I mean, they, they don't have a very good track record, from what I remember, of, of doing low latency uh, high plug-in counts. Um, you know, the, the absolute benchmark from that, of course, is DAW bench, but um, I'm not really sure uh, what we're, what we can do there. So let's say, let's say you're going to run those plugins and um, here we go. So I'm going to put on the monitoring track, I'm going to put our, Oh, I don't have the newest. Should I put the newest on? Okay. Give me a second. Uh, while while we're here, we're going to do something fun. Um, this computer doesn't have these yet. Uh, okay, let me just go for each. So I'm going to go to... Uh, shouldn't really do the reverb. I'm going to grab it anyway, but um, that's not... That's neither here nor there because the reverb can work in parallel. Um, yeah, let me just get this real quick. I'm getting the reverb. Um... I am, and, and sorry guys, if, if you're on Windows, we I can I can get you these right now. Um, but this is the, the we're having the trouble with the Pace installer again. This is another reason not to deal with this stuff. But I will deal with it. Um, okay, so that's the reverb. Where is there's drum EQ? One dynamic EQ and in intuition. That's gonna be the biggies.
Okay, dynamic EQ and intuition. Here's the newest intuition. Okay, so I'm just going to take all these and throw them in the VST3 folder. Okay, pop Reaper back up. So then we go intuition and dynamic EQ. Let's make sure they're actually getting through there. So let me delete this again. Uh, I'm this guy. Okay, so now we're hammering on the compressor. Obviously working. And so I'm going to turn this off and take a recording. Okay. And lo and behold, still the same latency. All right, 140 samples still right there. Haven't made any difference at all by putting those plugins in the path. So if you can run your stuff down to 64 samples, you're not going to save anything with that with that UA. It's um it's still 50 something samples. It's so close. And if I go to 32, oh, this is probably going to crash. Let's let's just see. Um, I'm on request sample. Wait, why should I request block size? Let me try this again. Yeah, see on, on Mac you have to do something funny with this. 48. Well, I don't think this thing's going to go down to 16. But let's try 32. Uh, this could be this could be really ugly. So 32. I'm gonna duplicate this track. So this is uh, 64. I think these 32 samples. Okay. Now who knows? Because before UA used to do some funny thing, or not UA. Uh, that these Thesicon drivers would do some funny things when you start getting lower, like that safety buffer would pop up big time. Let's just see what this is right off the bat. Oh, that is fast. Uh, and I was measuring this wrong. Sorry, guys. Okay, sorry. I'm, we're going to do this again. Sorry. Yeah, I knew I was screwing something up. Let's, let's get this. Okay. So here's our actual 307 samples. So that's 128 plus whatever the hell else is going on. Some kind of hidden safety buffer. Um, 128 samples. But again, that could be the driver reported latency. So let's let's call that let's call that zero. Uh, let's see what happens at, at 32. So 32, it is. Yeah, sorry for that colossal logic fail, guys. That was that was on me. That's bad. Very bad. No cookie. Okay. So now we're at 163. Okay. So this makes more sense. This is this is the. The, the buffer, but see, 32 plus 32, 64, uh, that's a little weird. So what did we just save um, between these two? So we dropped 146 samples between these two guys here. So 146 samples by, by going from 64 to 32. <clears throat> but the point is, that's with effects. I'm going to make one without effects. And what we should see here is the exact same latency. So let's see if we get that. OK. 
Okay. Exactly the same, right? Did I turn this one back on? Yeah, see, and when you guys, when I tell you guys that it's hard to see these waveforms, it's, it's hard to see these waveforms. Um, this, these gray ones look muted, I mean, to me anyway. But here they are. They're the exact same whether you got the plugins on or not. So plugins are zero latency for the most part, or for, you know, if you're going to put them in here. So the whole thing that matters is your monitoring latency. You're not going to get less monitoring latency with this UA. I, in fact, I'm almost sure you're going to get more because you're going to add 55 milliseconds to your to your monitoring chain. If I'm willing to add 55 milliseconds, I can double this right now, and I'll still get less. So that's that's what you're saving by getting one of those UA things. I can't, whatever. It might be good now. I mean, for all I know, they really fixed the drivers up and stuff, but yeah. I would caution you before you go buying stuff like that. Um, that's probably not going to matter. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'm going to take off from the stream and hopefully uh, John doesn't slag me too much for this, but this is how I see it.